Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for the Profane Sabbath. I mean, Tony for you. Demons are one of the most fascinating subjects to study in the field of theology. Every religion and culture has their take on the horrifying spirits that plague human souls, with many demons having potentially hundreds of years of history behind them. To me, the demon that always stood out amongst the rest is the one known as Baphomet, portrayed as an androgynous half-goat, half-human, with a roaring fire above their head. It's almost impossible to see this entity and not be wonderstruck. Famous for being the deity supposedly worshipped by the Knights Templar before their annihilation, and later evolved into a symbol of balance, wisdom, and the dualistic nature of existence. With seemingly infinite interpretations, from the most profane depiction of the devil himself, the truest representation of the human soul, or a protector and bearer of true wisdom. Without any further ado, let's talk about the occult icon, Baphomet. This video was made possible by the great people over at my Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Also, I have a Discord, so if you want to come chat with me and other wannabe theologists, come join and hang out. Starting with the most infamous association of Baphomet is their affiliation with the disbandment and subsequent total destruction of the Knights Templar. The first known recorded use of the name Baphomet was in a letter written in 1098 by one Ansem of Ribemont. The letter was written during the First Crusade. The Crusades were a series of holy wars directed by the Latin Church during the medieval period, meant to retake the Holy Land of Jerusalem from Islamic rule. The First Crusade took place over 10 years, from 1096 to 1099, in response to the Seljuk Empire taking over the region threatening the local population. Pope Urban II supported a request from the Byzantine Empire and rallied many armed pilgrims to travel to the local area and take part in the fight. The letter in question, having been written in 1098, was nearing the end of the crusade and stated that the Turks called loudly upon Baphomet. It's unlikely that this was an Islamic invocation of a demon to strengthen them in battle. In fact, most scholars believe the soldier misheard a recitation of the name Muhammad. The prophet Muhammad being invoked before battle would make a lot of sense for Islamic soldiers, as he was the last prophet of their religion and a strong military commander in his own right. The First Crusade was composed of people from across Europe and was even known as the People's Crusade. Knowing that, what strengthens this belief is that in Old French, the name for Mohammed would have been Mahomet, and the author Anselm was from Ribemont, France. Also at the time, the Crusaders would have been subject to Greek and Byzantine culture due to their location of the war. In contemporary literature, the prophet Muhammad was translated to Mohameth and was synonymous with a false prophet and potentially spoken of as a demon to the people at the time. Belief in their enemies' demon-worshipping ways proliferated throughout the ranks of the crusade and invigorated them in battle, leading to their victory. The fighting was far from over, however, and there ended up being eight major crusader expeditions, widely varying in size for nearly the next 200 years. This constant warring between the two sides led to the founding of an incredibly powerful army which facilitated much of the fighting. Over the years, they developed an infamy that would follow them to this day. That army being the Knights Templar. Founded in 1119, sometime after the First Crusade, they went by many names. The Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and the Temple of Solomon, Order of Solomon's Temple, and of course, most famously, the Knights Templar. Despite being named the Knights Templar, only about 10% of the members were actual knights. At their peak, they had around 15,000 to 20,000 members and were held in extremely high regard among all Christians as a highly religious Catholic order. The order's role was officially to protect Christian pilgrims in Palestine, but they also worked as financiers and in all manner of economic and political roles throughout not just their own nations, but the nations all across the world. Their reach was global and their power was unquestionable. With the backing of the Pope and the support of the people, they were a force to be reckoned with. That on top of the fact that they were viewed as some of the most skilled warriors in all of the globe, despite technically just being a charity. With constant swaths of new recruits and ample resources, the order grew and grew over the years, and at their height, a famous story told of 500 Templar knights helping out some thousand infantry defeat an army of more than 26,000 soldiers. Many influential people swore the oath of poverty to become a Knights Templar, handing away oversight of their businesses and land to the organization. But an organization such as this can only survive for so long before internal strife and dissension arise from even their allies. Like a set of dominoes, the order began to suffer much tragedy. The Islamic world became much more united under the guidance of leaders such as Saladin of the Ayyubid Empire. Their newly bolstered force was a serious threat to the Holy Land. 
The Knights Templar were also frequently at odds with other knightly orders, which led to weakened faith in Christian positions as a whole throughout the entire land. At the end of it all, the Holy Land was finally taken back by Islamic forces, leading to decades of back and forth fighting. Now, you might be asking, what did all that have to do with Baphomet? Well, as the power of the Knights Templar fell over the years, nasty rumors started to circulate about them and their operation. Operating essentially autonomously from other states, they were subject to much speculation, which got more and more dark over the years. Accusations ranged from the more mundane heresy and homosexuality to profane acts against the cross, such as urinating and spitting on crucifixes as initiation rituals. These rumors proliferated to such a degree that King Philip IV of France had many Knights Templar imprisoned and tortured. It also probably didn't hurt that King Philip was severely in debt to the order as well. During their torture and interrogation, a worrying trend emerged. Many of them claimed to worship the deity known as Baphomet. Accounts of this deity range wildly from a severed head to a three-faced demon. Many believe the victims were tortured so viciously that they just made something up to end their torment, while others believe that nearly 100 admissions of worshipping the same named deity to be no mere coincidence. Eventually, the accusations of heresy got so severe that Pope Clement V was pressured into disbanding the order. Theologists debated the origin of Baphomet for centuries, but one of the most intriguing interpretations is that of Hugh J. Schoenfield, one of the scholars who worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls. He put forward the idea in his book, The Essene Odyssey, that the word Baphomet run through the Atbash substitution cipher, which is a cipher that flips the alphabet in reverse, comes out to Sophia, which can be interpreted as Sophia. The name Sophia in Greek is frequently translated to love of wisdom, or sometimes simply as wisdom and intelligence. The name Sophia also is relevant as the entity appears as a main figure in the Gnostic tradition. Gnosticism is a heretical offshoot of Christian faith that believes the creator of the world is an accidental being known as the Demiurge, who created the earth as a means to sate his evil lust for power and worship. The true gods of the world, according to the Gnostics, exist outside our realm of understanding, and escaping this mortal coil and unclean world through knowledge and gnosis is their ultimate goal. The Gnostics were polytheistic, and it is possible that Baphomet through a cipher was one such deity the Knights Templar secretly worshipped in some shape or form. Either way, the myths of their legendary rise and fall would live on for the rest of human history. More modern interpretations of Baphomet came about in the mid-19th century. The book, Transcendental Magic, Its Doctrine and Ritual, by French occultist Eliphas Levi, put forward the depiction we all know today. The most striking and well-known excerpts and cover of the book itself was the deity Baphomet, imagined as the Sabbatic Goat. The art piece has a ton of occult symbolism tied to it. The goat carries the sign of the upright pentagram symbolizing spirit over matter and the importance of holiness. The arms are pointing in opposite diagonal directions, the right hand pointing up to the white moon of Chesed, the point in the Kabbalistic tree of life symbolizing love and kindness, the left hand pointing down to the black moon of Geburah, the point in the tree of life symbolizing the essence of judgment. One arm is male and the other is female, symbolizing the unification of the human spirit. The flame of intelligence shines between his horns as the magic light of the universal balance the image of the soul elevated above matter while also being tied to it. The beast's head expresses the horror of the sinner, and the rod in place of the genitals symbolizes eternal life. The scales and the semicircle behind the rod symbolize the water and the atmosphere, and the wings represent the volatile. The writings on each hand in Latin are solve, translated to dissolve, and coagula, translated to coagulate. There are even more aspects of the work that have deep meaning, but going over all of them would take ages. Every feature of this artwork is meticulously crafted to be the perfect unification of opposites as well as wisdom and judgment. Baphomet's role in occultism and ancient tales of polytheistic heresy may be more intertwined than you might think, and the coming together of many different cultural ideas to create something wholly new is not an uncommon practice. Unquestioningly, however, the figure of Baphomet could not shake the heretical and demonic connotations, despite the entity's ties to true evil being tenuous at best. Either way, his ubiquity in early and even modern occultism is well deserved, as his roots in Christian history go deep, and his depictions carry an amazing meaning and awe-inspiring beauty. In Shin Megami Tensei, Baphomet is depicted with a great amount of accuracy appearing as a black sabbatic goat with the body of a human and the head and legs of a goat. 
The snake-twined rod symbolizing eternal life makes an appearance, accompanied by the scaled semicircle representing the water and atmosphere. The flame of intelligence and wisdom burns bright between the horns of the goat along with the volatile wings draping the beast. Sadly, the arms are resting on the goat's legs instead of angled to the spirot points on the Tree of Life. And the arms also don't have the symbolic Latin words dissolve and coagulate on them. The pentagram is also missing from the beast's forehead, along with the look of horror. The female breasts of the demon are covered by a literal breastplate, for what I would assume are censorship reasons. It's fairly obvious to see the depiction is more demonic in nature, drawing inspiration artistically from the occult depiction with the more evil connotations of the Knights Templar heretical belief. Despite missing a few key features, the design is incredibly faithful to the source material, down to even the genitals. One of the most amazing designs in the series, for an equally amazing occult symbol in history. Well, that covers the history of the Sabbatic Goat Baphomet. I was very surprised to see that such an interesting demonic figure originated from the most holy of military orders. Let me know what you think of Baphomet in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Special thanks to Andre Vinicius the Silva Valens, Anton, Big T, Kalos, Frankie Stoned, Goose Kebab, Jim Taylor, Just a Middleman, Matt M, Patty123, Stuart Ash, The Digital Dutchman, The Toaster Messiah, Video Gamer 75 and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this occult history breakdown, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.